In the last six to 12 months, we have seen a huge increase in the number of AI products that are released with the aim of helping students with writing your essay, with assignments, and with all different parts of the research writing process. Now, it is very easy to get overwhelmed because which one should you use? Which one is worth paying for? Which one is free? Which one is going to give me the best results in the shortest time without having to spend so long figuring each of them out. So in today's video, I'm going through five quick and easy steps that use five different AI platforms to show you which one I'd recommend, all with the aim of writing a literature review. So let's get started. So the first step of writing a literature review is to find appropriate literature. So you have to actually do a literature search. The traditional way would be to go on a platform like PubMed or Google Scholar and search for key terms and look for research papers and just kind of do that manually and set yourself a task to do it, you know, every week or every few days. However, using the platform Our Discovery, which actually I've got up here on my phone, it's a free app that you can download. Um, you can actually get automated research papers that are recently published right into your inbox with notifications. So let me show you how you can do this. So I'm gonna have it on screen over here. Um, essentially what you do is you set your feed. So it's a bit like, you know, an, an algorithm essentially. You set your feed and my feed, as you can see, I follow these topics that I think are interesting for my particular research studies. And I also, you can also kind of rank it as to how important each of those topics are for you. So for me, I've got important topics like molecular binding, but actually I don't care too much about the expression of IQ gap one. So I've made that low but I am kind of interested in it. So if there's something that will come up, then it will. You can also say what topics you are not interested in. So I definitely don't want to see anything about NWASP, for example. So that's something key to remember. You could then also follow certain journals that you'd be interested in. So I know, for example, Cytoskeleton, that journal, all the papers that are published within that journal are really relevant and very important to me. So I'm following that particular journal. So you can do that and that can also kind of help with the algorithm and with recommendations. And then you can also say, Say, right, I am interested in, okay, so I'm going to the top 100 papers. I'm just gonna search through this and I'm gonna keep on going and find, oh, this one was just published. That's really important. When you're writing a literature review, it's really key that you are able to find and discuss the most recently published papers. So you're not saying something that actually currently is, is inaccurate. So I'm gonna go there. This was published at the start of this month and you can just really see that all the details are there. You can read the abstract. And then you can also tell the alg algorithm whether or not it's relevant to you. So that will kind of give you more related topics um, or not include that for you. And then if you want, you can listen to it as a, an audio. <laughs> so that's a nice way of doing it. You can also translate it to different languages. And then most importantly, you can export this and export it to your referencing manager. So I particularly use Mendeley. So I'll export to Mendeley. And what this does is it will add it to my Mendeley like library slash database automatically. And so when I come to write my literature review in a few weeks time or whenever it is, I have these papers in there so I can just reference that automatically and I'm saving myself lots of time of kind of going back and forth. The second step is to evaluate and select your sources. So now that you've got a long list of papers, you actually need to read them. It's not good enough to just look at the abstract. You actually need to understand what they mean and redetermine what your areas of maybe the gap in literature or like your subtopics or the parts of discussion, your critique, that all has to come into it and that comes into it by actually reading the papers. So again, traditionally, you can just open the PDF, have a good read, you may or may not understand it, but today we have AI. The AI platform I recommend for this is using chat PDF. So let me show you how. Okay, so this is chat PDF. It's just a bit like chat GPT really. So what it allows you to do is it allows you to um, upload a PDF or a research paper, and then you can actually ask questions about it. So here's one that I have uploaded in the past. And this was a quite in-depth one, it's 21 pages. So there's a lot of text here. And I think as someone who's maybe reading research for the first time, or just like delving into this topic for the first time, you probably would find it a bit hard to understand. So what you can do is you can ask some questions. And it starts off by giving you some example questions that you might want to answer. And yeah, you can get a good understanding and a good starting point from there. But you can also go into more depth and kind of ask follow up questions and say, what are the limitations and summarize this paper um, and explain figures as well. So figure one was somewhere down here. If I scroll all the way down, I think it was 
at the end yeah figure one was here and i just didn't understand it i didn't feel like i knew what it meant so i said explain figure one and it actually gave a, a really good amount of detail that i was really impressed with speaking about different colors and what they are and what it means and kind of how it relates to the actual topic itself so you know you've got those papers and now you have to understand it and this is a great way of starting the third thing you want to do is identify themes, gaps in literature and debates. So now that you've like honed in and you kind of narrowed down the papers that you're interested in, you kind of understand the topic a bit more, you've done a bit of reading, you want to really craft your literature review and think about what direction it is that you're going to be speaking in. So thinking about the topics that you're going to be speaking about, thinking about the organisation, the layout, the subtopics, what you're going to include and this is where you can use a platform like Elicit. Okay, so Elicit is, a, again, a really great platform that I'd recommend. And essentially what you can do here is you can extract data from lots of PDFs. So there's three things you can do actually. So first, find papers, extract data, and also find lists of concepts. So I'm just gonna ask this question here. I'm gonna say, what is a gap in literature um, about IQ gap one and the cell cortex? And what it does is you can either ask it to search through your research. So let's say you had 10 papers that you have narrowed down and you're really interested in those papers, you can upload those 10 papers and then ask a question and it gives you an answer based off of those 10 papers. That's really cool because you know that what you're giving it is where the information is coming from. So if you don't, it can also find papers for you. So here's the final answer. It's looked at four top four papers and it's said that collectively it, it, they suggest the gap is regarding the role of IQ gap one. So they've given some some research that is um, relevant, which is really good. And then they've given the actual research papers for you as well. So this is why these platforms that I'm mentioning in this video is so different to ChatGPT, for example. Whilst that will give you an answer, you are not getting references and it's not built for an academic audience. Here you can see that you've got all these papers that are presented to you and it gives you the abstract summary and it kind of says why it thinks that these are relevant. And yeah, I think that's really interesting. So this one, maybe let's take a look at one of them. You get, the good, you get a nice little summary. And what you can do to go even further is you can filter it out. So you can, for example, say, I only want papers after 2010. I only want review papers. I only want the abstract to contain these words. You can save it and give yourself a bit of a, a, a different answer, that, an answer that's a bit more refined. So yeah, when you're really trying to find what those uh, research areas are this can be really helpful okay moving on we are starting to write now that we have all the information at this stage you want to try to generate an outline so you should have a, a good idea of what you want to include so to generate an outline you can use the platform jenny.ai and i've talked spoken about this platform so many times in this channel um, and i i really enjoy it. i think it works really well for finding outlines so let's take a look at what this looks like Okay, so when you start a new document on Jenny, it asks you to say and kind of prompt what you're writing about today. So I've said I'm writing an essay about the impact of IQ gap one knockdown on cell cortex nucleation. The more detail you give, the better. And then I say, can you build me an outline? So you don't have to select this, but if you do select this, it can build you a bit of an outline that you can start from. So I say, start writing. Okay, and as you can see, there's the kind of outline for what I need to include for this review. And what you want to do here is just take a look at what they've included and try to cross-reference that with what you've read so far. So you've done a bit of reading, obviously, and you kind of know the ideas of what you want to speak about, and you kind of know sort of the topics that you want to speak about, and you can use this as a supporting. So yes, you need to speak about understanding cell cortex nucleation, that's correct. The method of IQ gap knockdown. So if you haven't included that already, that's a prompt that you need to include this, definitely important. The effect, analysis, the implication, and then a bit more of a discussion and maybe future directions or limitations. So this is a really great way of generating an outline and then inputting the information yourself. Uh, you can even go as far as like, they can give you recommendations for how to write or what to include. So for example, as you can see here, it's given in the first sentence, I can accept it. And then of course, I need to make sure that I'm citing so I can add any citations that I think are relevant. So if you look at these journals, you can have your own library, but you can look at these journals and see which one you want to add. And um, once you've of course read them and understood them, and then that just means that it's added there and it's, you know, a, a place to start. And then last but not least, you actually want to start to 
fully write it. So you've got the outline, you want to start to write it. You can either write it on a platform like Jenny, um, you can write it on like using PaperPal, for example, which is quite similar, or you can just go to Microsoft Word and take everything that you've read, take all the information, if you're writing a literature review on Microsoft Word, you can get the Microsoft Word add-in for Mendeley. So you're able to very seamlessly kind of add that information into Mendeley citations and everything kind of cross-reference. So it isn't, it feels like you're using lots of platforms, but actually you really aren't. Our discovery easily syncs to Mendeley, Mendeley easily syncs to Microsoft Word. So it's all connected to be honest, and it really doesn't feel like you're using that many platforms. And then you start to write. And also if you if you do write on PaperPal, you have got the add-in um, on Word. So again, you can check your grammar and punctuation automatically. So like I said, it's just all very seamlessly um, blended in. I think different tools suit different people and based on your research area, your research interests, your research aims, you may find different tools helpful. So hopefully you might find these ones helpful in this video. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up. Let me know if you've tried any of them and if you find it helpful. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.